Hey everybody, it's David here from Real Hard Reviews, and today I want to do a different video. We got sent from MSI the Gungair 110R. They told us to do a review on this, and also the B55, and also this, their new 360 AIO cooler. But in today's video, I'm going to be doing a more of an overview on how it is to build in this brand new case, and also showcase you what features it has, and what the build log might look like if you were to planning to buy this specific case with, you know, maybe this specific cooler and possibly this specific motherboard as well, which is the B55 Tomahawk. So let's just jump in and let's start building and see how this works. So here it is. This is the Gunnier 110R. It's a very sleek mid-size case um, from MSI. This is not their first case that they built. The first one was actually the 100. This is the 110R. So this is their second generation case. So they've improved upon a few things in this case specifically. Now, from the top, you can see right off the bat, we have a magnetic uh, dust filter, which is a really nice thing to have. Uh, even though this might be an exhaust, it won't really do much. But nonetheless, having this feature is a pretty cool little thing. Moving on, now we got the actual ports, which includes a power button reset switch, um, USB Type-C, which is really good, and two regular USB ports, and a headphone and microphone jack, and also power LED as well, if you want to turn that on and off. Now, overall, I really do like it. It's uh, pretty sleek for what it's worth. It is still a mid-sized case, so it's not too, too big. Uh, so if you're looking to do a moderate build, this could fit everything you need. I'm actually pretty curious in this case if it can support a 360 uh, AIO that uh, MSI sent me. It'll be interesting if it can, because the only place you can actually put this is pretty much vertically here. Uh, on top, you can only put a 240 on top, I think. It is where it is. Uh, but if you're planning to do that, remember the 360 is always going to be on the side. If you're putting an AIO cooler, or a 240 on the top. Now, to take off the tempered glass up front is just some thumb screws on the side. Once you pop that out, it just automatically pops open and you're greeted with the glass popping off inside the case. So it looks pretty clean, pretty decent. You already have a 2.5 inch SSD bay ready to go if you wanted to put one in there and a bunch of fans as well included in this case. So we, all these fans here, you can see this three uh, 120, fan, 120 mil fans here. And also back here, we have another one and they're all RGB or ARGB as well. So it's gonna be pretty nice to have all these fans built into the case and cool the price. So let's just jump in and go from there. Now the back panel is a pretty standard affair. Let's just take off these thumb screws in the back here and you're able to just basically, oh, that's gone. Basically take off the panel pretty quickly here. So let's just do that. And voila. And MSI has a pretty decent offering as far as cable management. You do get a bunch of Velcro ties in the back here, which is a really nice feature to have in these cases. So cable management is great. And in the bottom here, you have your hard drive bays, which are, at least two of them in the back here, including all your accessories and cables uh, and screw mounts to mount the motherboard. So it's nice to have in there. And also your RGB uh, header here is as well in the back. Now, something to worry about this case is this, it's the front panel. As you can see, they have nice tempered glass up front here and plastic on the side. And there's some vent holes on the top and you know a little bit of a vent here as well and some venting on the bottom and on the sides. So the only negative thing about this is it's not gonna get enough airflow to push through air here. It's basically starving the fans. Now MSI did actually have another case which doesn't have a tempered glass here. It actually has a plastic uh, vent similar to on top. So if you're looking for optimal cooling performance, I wouldn't say to pick up this one specifically, but depending on the components that you put in this case, then you don't want to have to worry too much about thermals overall. So let's just pop this up real quick and let's take it from a spin. To pop the front of this case, it's pretty standard. Just basically pull this off. Now it's almost impossible to do with one hand. I'm not breaking it, but it comes off pretty quickly. So as you can see, you got the tempered glass here. 
and you have your three 120 mil fans. It also includes a filter up front that can just pop off in the corner of here. And you just pop it off and voila, you have access to the fans directly. So that's pretty nice. You can go clean this out whenever you feel like and uh, go from there. Before installing the motherboard and the actual AIO cooler, I wanna to talk to you about something in regards to how to be mounting this 360 IO. As I previously mentioned, the only way to mount this is basically vertically. So there's been a little bit of a hindrance here. And as, as you can see, the tolerance between here and here to put an AIO cooler is almost impossible, but there is a cutout for it. So the, the guys at MSI actually thought about this. You can actually move this caddy a little bit further up and that way you can actually install the uh, radiator off of this into here. So what does that mean? That means you essentially have to uh, take this um, caddy out and push it over. So there's already screw holes in here that you can actually just mount it over to here. It's just basically moving it over. That way you still retain the, your um, hard drive caddies in here without removing it completely. So let's see how that works and I'll be mounting that directly into the case. So first little problem in regards to moving this caddy to actually install the AIO cooler. And is that to remove this caddy and move it down one, you'll have to remove the actual uh, legs of the system because sadly, the actual screw that's in here is hidden and blocked away from this plastic. So to move it, you have to take this off, then take the four screws holding the caddy, move it over, remount it, and have enough available space to mount the AIO cooler for a 360 mil. Something that I'm, I forgot to mention too, that you also get a uh, SSD 2.5 mil drive bay here if you need to put one in here in the back which is nice and in total you'll have four in total in regards to how many bays you can have so you have two here one in the back here and obviously one in the front so four in total plus whatever your uh, motherboard has for MVME drives so tons of space to have a case expand upon now i actually remove the legs off the system as you can see we got the two screws here holding the hard drive caddy. So let's move that over and let's take that apart. So when we're trying to remove the hard drive caddy, remember there's an actual extra screw holding it on top, which is in the back here. So let's remove that screw real quick. And that way we can finally move the drive out of the way so we can mount our AIO flush on here. So now we finally were able to take that screw off and now we can move this freely to the left and the right. So we're gonna move it a little bit here and that's where we're gonna be trying to install the screws back so we have space enough for the AIO shield. Okay, so I finally was able to do it. I moved the caddy over, I can install the AIO cooler. I'll be taking these three front fans off and installing the ones that are included with the AIO, and I'll go from there. Now if the fan's installed, we're gonna install the AIO radiator on here in the front, and plenty of clearance, that should fit perfectly. So we'll install that, and then we'll install the motherboard and the CPU as well. So MSI was nice enough to send this over to build in this case, which is their new B555 Tomahawk motherboard. Uh, supports third gen Ryzen and most likely fifth gen Ryzen as well, for Gen 3 architecture. But it's a nice little board. Let me just open that up real quick for you guys to see how a quick look at readings. And it has a ton of features for a mid-sized board. And see how all of this looks like. Kind of hard to do with one hand, so give me a quick second here. Okay, finally took it out of the actual plastic bag, and it's a pretty nifty little board. It has, as always, RGB here if you need be. It has a detached little cooler on top of here, as well as the top here. And you got your IO ports here with the built in IO shield as well, which is nice that this case has, or sorry, motherboard has, so you don't have to worry about fiddling around with this too much. And you get MVME, you get Gen 4 here, that you can definitely put in install. So you have two of these, so you can put them anywhere you want. And for our um, DDR4 memory, then you can put it here. So inside of here, we're gonna be putting some G-Scale RAM, around 3200 megahertz, and a nice little Ryzen 5 3600 XT will go in here. So let me just mount that CPU real quick into this motherboard, and then we'll mount the AIO cooler on the back, and then proceed to swap it in here. Okay, let's mount the CPU in here, which is a nice Ryzen 5 3600 XT. Lines up perfectly. Let's put this back in here. 
and voila. So let's install the RAM real quick. Okay, almost done installing the RAM. So I'm installing some G-Sco Trident Z. So there will be tons of RGB in this case. So let's finish installing this real quick and I'll be right back. And there we go, we installed all 32 gigs of RAM. So we're just gonna mount the AIO cooler on top of here real quick and go from there. So I'm gonna apply some thermal compound that's included with the AIO cooler real quick. I'm just gonna put a quick X pattern on here. And are you guys already in the comment section? Or Gonna be pretty upset how I apply my thermal paste, but in all the sense of the word, this is how I like to do it. If you guys don't like it, well, that's up to you. <laughs> so there we go. A little too much, but oh well, it is what it is. Okay, and now we're gonna put the I/O on to directly on the CPU. So I'm just gonna line this up real quick, and I'll just put it on top and go from there. Okay, so we're gonna screw this in real quick. A little nice and tight. Make sure this is screwed as well. Okay, nice and tight here. And the beauty of this as well, if, you, if you're having this, uh, an issue where the dragon is not lined up properly, you can flip it over. So I was like, gives you the ability to do that. They're coolers, so it's a nice feature. So at least you know their dragon is always facing the right side. So that's a pretty good tool of the dragon. Okay, so that's been mounted, ready to go. So we're gonna put that into here and we're gonna mount the, a, the radiator as well into that little slot back here. So let's just do this real quick and let's put this uh, motherboard inside this case. Put this four, five screws that you'll need to put this motherboard in there and go from there. Here it is mounted inside the case. So I'm gonna put the four screws remaining in here real quick or four or five screws for the motherboard and then I'll mount this bad boy directly onto the fans and we should be pretty much good to go. I'll finish up putting the power supply in and put the graphics card as well and mounting maybe a few extra fans on top as well for an exhaust. So let's do that real quick. Let's put these four screws in and go from there. Yeah, it's always a pain to put these screws in here. Make sure to always have a screwdriver has a magnetic tip on here. I have count so, lost so many screws doing this process. It's actually really, really helpful to have. There she is. So I installed the I.O., ready to go. We're gonna put uh, the power supply in here real quick and then basically attach all the cables in here. And the case is pretty much good to go. So far, so good, actually, I really do like it. Um, just a little negative feature was removing the actual hard drive caddy. That was just a major pain in the butt. If this was easier, just like a user removable, you can just pull it out and put it back into the corner. That would be great instead of taking off the actual um, legs and putting that in there. As far as wire management goes, there's plenty of places where you can actually wire manage it. Uh, so you get the Velcro straps here, so I'll utilize these and also these grommets and a ton of uh, you know, places to actually stuff your wires and hide them pretty well if you need be. So let's do that real quick. I'm gonna put these cables back or put them together. Let's get this thing ready to go and shoot some amazing B-roll for it. So basically, to connect all these three fans directly to the actual AIO and to this actual CPU pin here, uh, MSI actually includes a daisy chainable power for the actual cables. So you basically daisy chain them together, all three of them, and then it will end into one little terminal here that you can just attach directly to the CPU fan. Once that's done, you're pretty much good to go. All you need to do afterwards is just install your addressable RGB, and next thing you know it, you're ready to go. Okay, so now pretty much connected everything for the AIO, just putting some wire management here and then putting the addressable RGB that the case comes included with, so it's pretty nice. Uh, then I'll be mounting the power supply underneath here, and we should be good to go and turn this bad boy on. I'll be installing graphics card later on too, so just don't worry about that. And we should be good. Okay, so pretty much all wired up here for the AIO and the addressable RGB. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna be doing now is installing the power supply. Uh, this is just the power supply that I'm laying around. This is a simple 500 watt power supply, more than enough for the system. And so let's install this. Sadly, this is not modular, so it's gonna be a bit of a pain to hide these wires, but at the same time, it'll be a great test to see how this all can look like after being a little bit more wire managed here. So let's step real quick here. And here we are. So I installed the power supply here down here. It was pretty straightforward. You basically slide it back in inside and you can have your cables managed in the back here. 
and everything else is ready to go. I'm gonna pretty much install the graphics card right here. Uh, something I did notice with this case is that sadly, everything is screw based here instead of having thumb screws. It would be nice if they did that with uh, these screws. You get to use basically a screwdriver every time, which is fine. This is a mid-tier case, so don't expect everything out of it. Uh, but then you just basically take the screws to the back here and you can mount your graphics card. So I'm gonna mount that real quick inside of here and I'll show you how that looks in a bit. So for today, we're gonna to be installing an RTX 2070. I could not get a 3070 or 3080 or 3090 for that matter, mainly because of short supply from NVIDIA and the partner boards. Um, even MSI couldn't really uh, send me one of those. They're just so short in demand. So for today, this will have to do. So I'll put a 27 in here. It should fit in here pretty easily. It has plenty of clearance on both sides. So I don't see this ever being an issue if you can have your AIO installed here onto the vertical mountains position here so let's install this bad boy and see what that looks like there we go mounted the rtx 2070 inside here i'm just going to put the final connector inside and attach the rgb rgb header onto here real quick and we're pretty much ready to go with this i'm going to put the side panels on and then take some nice b-roll of this thing but overall it's Pretty good to build so far. I've been liking it. Um, there's not much I can really say about that. Look at that. So let's mount this thing back. Let's mount the side panels back as well and also mount the uh, front panel and we'll go from there. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So here's my wire management. Not the greatest in the world, but it'll do. Uh, one thing to get a notice as well with these things is that uh, I lost a lot of these little caps for these guys. So make sure to cover these up with some electrical tape on here. So that way it's not gonna short when you put the actual uh, case back together of the back panel. But as far as cable management goes, there's tons of places where you can actually uh, put your uh, managing. I didn't do much of a good job, but it's more than adequate. And if you really wanna spend the time, you can really make it, this looks pretty and maybe get a better power supply that's uh, modular. So you don't have all these cables lingering in the background here. So let's pop the uh, case back on, or actually the back panel and the front panel, and let's turn this bad boy on and see how she looks. Okay, and here's the front. Now we can see from here, it's pretty good overall. I'm gonna install this thing real quick here, and then we're, we're good to go. I'm gonna put the front panel on, we'll turn it on, see how everything looks. It mounts pretty well. And it's so far, it's been a pretty enjoyable case. Only thing I hated was this guy here. I would just wish that MSI would move the actual HD caddy a little bit to more uh, this side, so I don't have to waste my time taking this off and put, pushing this back. And uh, we'll see how this looks when she's all ready to go. Something that I forgot to mention as well is that you do get a dust filter for the power supply on here. A little finicky. It's not magnetic, sadly, like the top part over there. Uh, so to install this, it's it's fine, but it can be a little finicky to install. As a matter of fact, installing it with one hand is a bit a pain in the butt. There we go. There we go. Okay, here's the actual case, almost completed. I'm just gonna quickly boot it up without putting the case covers on, because, you know, it's always bad luck to put the actual side panels back on and something were to happen. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna install the power cable, turn it on, see if it all just turns on pretty well. And we get posts and, and uh, we can easily boot it up. So let's do that real quick, see how that looks and go from there. There she is. She's all booted up, works right off the bat. All fans are working and it looks pretty good. So you know what, I'm gonna put the side panels on and see how everything looks from there on. And there you have it. So it's all ready to go, essentially. Looks pretty good, it's pretty minimal build, nothing too complex or too uh, insane about this build. Having a 360 millimeter IIO in front, which is great. Uh, good stuff there. A little bit overkill for the CPU overall, but you know, you have that extra cooling potential. And problem is, once again, as I mentioned earlier, not much intake here, so you're not gonna get the optimal amount of thermal performance out of this cooler. If you were to put in this in this case overall, I would opt out and grab the one that had the slit vents on top on the side as well, but the glass does make it look much, much better. Uh, but though, I wanted to tell you something real quick as well, and it's this. It's this little power LED button here. You press this and you get the switch 
the actual colors of the case ASAP without using any pesky software or going through the computer to do so. Which is pretty cool because you also get to change the color of that, the actual AIO cooler in the middle. So you can have that sync up pretty quickly. So that's a little nifty feature. If you don't want to mess around with the settings too much, you can just click on this, find the right one, and you're good to go. So yeah, let me do a quick few B-roll shots and montage, and let me tell you my final opinions about this whole build from MSI. <laughs> This, it's done. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And overall, I do really like this case for what it's worth, uh, for the price points at. You do get tempered glass, you get cable management at the back here. Uh, you get a nice sleek design. You get an amount of good uh, AI IO ports on top, including a power LED switch, so you can flip around to the switches. You also get um, three to four fans, depending on all you pick up. And you can also fit a 360 mil um, AIO in here if you really want to. A little bit of a pain to get and install it, but that's fine. But it's, it's a relatively easy and painless case to build in. Like overall, it's good. Is it stellar? No. Is there room to improvement? A hundred percent. There is always. These. It is a pretty low tier case in regards to price wise. It's great, but like there's some usabilities that you want to be able to have. Mainly like you know thumb screws here for the graphics cards, and some choices here and there that could be used to be improved to be improved on. Though the case does include four RGB fans, so three in the front, one in the back. And you can install as many as, I think, two more on top. So that would be three, four, five, and six fans on top overall. So there's a plenty of cooling options in here. So the case also does come with multiple configurations to the front. So if you wanted to change that, you can. You can get the one that has the mesh up front too. And But overall, this was a relatively easy and fun build. And I want to say thank you to MSI for, you know, providing me the parts to build this case and with to also test out the uh, AIO cooler. I'll have a separate video for that just to test out the thermals in regards to the case and plus the AIO cooler as well. And also I'll probably do a quick review on the B55 motherboard that's in here as well. So if you like this video, once again, put a thumbs up for the good old YouTube algorithm. And if you have any questions, concerns, or anything about this regard, this build, just leave a comment in the section below. So yeah, this is Dave from Real Hard Reviews, signing in.